Hello, and welcome to session two of PD Bytes Presents EdTech in World Languages. We have lots of great PD for you today about using EdTech in the world language classes. And I've got um, some special guests with me for this session. So I am your host, Shannon Steimel. I'm the Library Media Specialist and Tech Committee Chair at Lift for Life Academy in St. Louis. And I'm very excited to have my co-host here. And I'm gonna let her introduce herself, April. Hi, I'm April Burton. I am the Instructional Technology Content Leader for the Francis Howell School District. And as a former French teacher in the classroom for 15 years, I'm also the World Language Content Leader for Francis Howell. So uh, April is really our expert um, for this. She was um, even recognized for her innovative work in the World Languages classroom as an MET Spotlight Educator a few years back. So we're glad to have her here. I also have one of my colleagues here and I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey, I'm Young Ai. I'm the Chinese Mandarin teacher here at Live for Life Academy. I'm originally from mainland China. Great, so um, our special guest for this segment actually is on spring break. Lucky her. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she couldn't join us live, but um, she and her tech coach, Erin Lawson, were nice enough to record a great video where she's gonna show us how she uses uh, the technology in a, a variety of ways in her tech-infused language classroom. So uh, here we're gonna go with Chelsea from Orchard Farm. Um, okay, I'm Chelsea Richardson. I teach Spanish 2, 3, 4, and AP Spanish at Orchard Farm High School. Um, so this is just a little bit of the technology that I use. Forgive the papers that I'm obviously grading. Um, but so we do dual units in our class. We do um, we do a grammar unit, but we don't stick with just grammar. Um, they also read uh, novellas, and they have to speak and write um, about what they read. Um, so with grammar, actually, technology has been really helpful because it uh, makes it so that they can practice at home, and it also is so that we can spend our class in time doing more, or our in-class time, sorry, doing more um, interactive things with the language writing and speaking. So a lot of times with grammar what I do is I create um, I create a Google Classroom assignment that's got multiple uh, parts to it. So this is um, the perfect tenses. So I've created multiple Quizlet lists um, and each section of the notes I've got a video to go with and we also use uh, Edpuzzle um, which is something that the students I can make them stop and take notes and, and uh, take quizzes on and then once they're done with the ed puzzle and they fill in their their own notes um, I usually do a self-correcting Google form for them so I come up or I, I, I write their questions using their the grammar that we just discussed and some vocab um, and I write what they should be working on they fill it in but then um, using Fluberu, which is an add-on we can do to put on auto grade um, it will send them back which ones they got right or wrong and I can ask it to do that without sending back the answer key so then the students have to look and see or, uh, what they wrote and figure out what they did wrong the idea being it helps them to not make the same mistake in the future and since it's self-correcting it saves us a lot of time we don't have to spend a ton of time in grammar or in grammar in class um, and they can call me over if they can't figure it out or th and they can have their notes up while they're doing it, help them be a little more self-directed. Um, and then if I decide it's time to move on to work on the more interactive parts of foreign language, um, they have the link to the Google Form on Classroom um, and they can go work on it at home too. It doesn't have to be done in class and then turned in on paper. Um, so that's actually one of the tools that I love the most. The kids don't particularly care for it <laughs> because um, it, some of that, and, they have to figure out what they did wrong, <laughs> which is why I love it and it's why they don't. Um, but it's actually really good for them and it helps free us away from having to be doing grammar all the time. Um, those of us that teach foreign language, we all know that you have to learn some of it and then you just kind of want to be done with it and actually use the Spanish eventually, so or French or Russian, whatever. Um, so some of the more interactive, so that's the, what I do to make the grammar um, more interactive. That's how I use technology with that. Um, to do some of the 
um, more performance task things to, to use technology for that. Uh, we do a lot of Flipgrid. Um, which is a website online that you can get it for free and get them to talk to up to uh, a minute 30. Um, gives them a prompt and they can record it right there on their screens or on their phones. Um, they like to have a lot of fun with it because they can put they can take selfies and put little stickers on it. Um, so we do a lot of that where I give them one response or I give them one prompt and them or them with a partner um, have to record a speaking response instead of a writing one. Um, we do, the kids' favorite is always Kahoot. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard about that, um, but kids really seem to love that still. I've kind of changed that a little bit around um, to make them write their own sometimes, um, and, or uh, their table groups. They have to come up with the questions that they think are important from the chapter um, to make their own, and then we put them up on the board. Um, a newer one is quizzes, which is sort of like Kahoot, but the kids work at their own pace instead of the quiz answers being up on the screen all the time. Um, so those are some like formative assessments, whatever, that I use after they've done the grammar stuff or that can, as a really easy for reading comprehension. Um, we do a lot of screencastify, and we use that in multiple avenues. So they can record themselves just speaking something that they prepared um, but it's a big telltale sign because they have to show me themselves when they're doing it so they don't think that you can tell if they're reading off their screen but you can um, and so that's it that's a good thing if you've got a class of 30 have them screencastify their responses um, and turn them in instead of you know having to go to each kid and listen to them speak in the moment because when we have our big classes we all know we don't have time for that um, but another thing I've started using Screencastify for is to pattern um, some things in the younger grades, how the AP test is patterned, which is teaching, like forcing them to do a conversation with it. So I'll record myself doing a conversation, a one-sided conversation on Screencastify. Um, and it'll be usually be about what they've read so that they've got something they can refer to, the topic with which they're familiar that they can work with. Um, but I'll, I'll come up with one of the essential questions about what we've read, and I will start a conversation about it. And I'll ask a question, so I'll start this conversation, I'll ask a question, and then I'll time myself 15 to 20 seconds, and that part stays, and, and that stays silent. Um, and that's when they're going to be responding to me. And I'll do that for about four or five times um, to where they have to respond back three or four. Um, so then I share the Screencastify video with them via Google Classroom, and they have to fill in that conversation. Um, and I give them a time period, and they Screencastify themselves filling in the conversation. So then that it's, it's kind of a double whammy, um, but it's patterned off the AP exam. It helps me see that can they understand me when I speak, um, because they have to come up with a response right there and they're not they don't have their friends to help them out or someone you know the, the kid in class that raises their hand all the time to give them the answer um, so it lets me know can they understand me when I speak can they respond in kind um, and can they follow when I ask them a question what question they're answering um, can they follow the point of the essential question so that really it's pretty basic it's me recording myself and then them recording themselves listening to me record myself, um, but it does test a lot, it does show me what they can do in a lot of different areas. Listening comprehension, thinking on their feet, using the words they know, and how they're following the essential questions of what they're reading. Um, so uh, I could probably pull up a quick example of that. Um, so let's see. This is Google Classroom with the notes here. Okay, so this is their sample. So this is the video that I pre-recorded where I'm speaking to them and I try and make it as conversational as possible. And so this is me talking about one of the essential questions of El Feed. And then you see at one point I just shut up for 10 or 15 seconds and I try to stare at the camera and nod my head so that they actually feel like it's a conversation. Um, so that's how I record it to begin with. It gets shared with them on Classroom, and then let's see if I can still access um, an example. So then I've got this young lady here who uh, recorded it from her bedroom. But as you start it, 
you can hear me, the, my voice in the background, and then she has to start conversing with me. Um, so that's been a really neat tool. Uh, it does take a while to grade, make sure your rubric is, is easy to follow. Um, but it's been really helpful and the technology has made it available for us to do that. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of Quizlet Live. Um, we do um, News ELA because they have some things in Spanish. I don't know if that's offered for a whole lot of other languages yet, um, but that's really good for reading comprehension. Um, yeah, and a lot of times we do a lot of stu we've been doing a lot of student choice this year, um, so it's not uncommon for myself and the other Spanish teacher to ask the students to choose their own medium to. Um, express reading comprehension or ideas and answers to the essential questions. Uh, currently right now we have a project going where students are taking the characters in a book and making a um, a social media fallout about the book. So they, they have to come up with um, a big flashy headline and a short article that would show up on a social media news feed and they have to come up with um, a real outlandish interview with one of the characters. Um, the interview they can do on Wii Video, the kids like to do that, um, and they can use that as a video editing. They can use iMovie Editor, those of them that have um, iPhones that they want to record it on, um, or our Library Media Center also has the green screen that the students um, can choose to use too. Because um, the truth is, and the kids are digital natives, so so a lot of times I've discovered if I give them the rubric and give them some choice, they'll find techy things that I've never even heard of um, to use and then, it, and then it's really neat. So we've kind of combined that too, um, giving them some student choice. But um, depending on what resources your school has available, the green screen is really neat. Um, the Wii video, they get so many minutes for free that they can do. Um, and of course, if they have iPhones, uh, that's helpful too. So, I think that's about it. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you, Chelsea. Can you say your name one more time and where are you working at? Uh, my name is Chelsea Richardson. I work at Orchard Farm, Orchard and, Farm. and I teach the advanced Spanish, cl Spanish classes. So, All right. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you. So, what did you guys think? Wow. Yeah, she did a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I liked her talking about the different formative assessment, like grammar things that she does with her students. Um, you know, like getting, I don't, I don't love Kahoot, but I do like quizzes because they can work at their own pace. And that's the like mundane, like, like grammar stuff that's not fun to use in class. Um, and I liked her use of that. <clears throat> How about yeah. you, Jan? For me, I, uh, what really stood out to me is the way that she's kind of giving the filling time. I mean, she record herself in that video and then she's wait. And the most, ama uh, the most amazing part, like she's like nodding her head. They're just, in <laughs> I'm encouraging you, right? So that's pretty awesome. And it's very uh, creative to me and also really make their conversation real, so real. Even she's not listening, she's like nodding her head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool, yeah. You know, I, I loved that too. Um, and I think it's it's awesome that it's actually modeled after what they'll experience in the AP exam. I mean, that's so hard to prep them for something mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah. So that's a really um, creative way to do that. Um, I also liked how she talked about the immediate feedback um, that she can give the students um, whenever you're using self-grading quizzes, whether that's um, using something like Fluberoo or um, just a quiz platform that gives them immediate feedback. And um, she mentioned the green screen, and I think that would be really fun in a world language because you could pick, you know, any background in the world um, for your green screen to, to actually take yourself there. And I know um, a little bit later in this mini conference, we're gonna talk about more ways um, like Google Maps that you can you know, take the kids there to the locations. Um, but green screen is definitely a cool way. Um, and then the, the last thing that she mentioned that I also really loved is that idea of student choice. Yes. You know, that you don't have to know every single 
um, you know, program our app um, and know how to use it and help them with it. But, you know, if you just let them select that they are pretty sex savvy and they'll either um, figure it out or they'll try something else. Um, so th those were some of the, the key takeaways that I had. And just to kind of piggyback on that student choice, I found in my own experience, when you do give students the choice, you're going to get a better end product because they're passionate about what they're, what they're doing. So when they're demonstrating what they've learned, you want them to be excited. Um, and my own students, a lot of times they were trying to one-up each other, like, I can write a song. Well, I can write a rap. And um, they, they just really get excited and go above and beyond what they typically would do if you were just telling them to write an essay or something like that. Yeah, definitely. They have more passion. If they mm -hmm. have more power they can make the decision that what kind of thing they want to work on, but always related to what we're looking for. So, I mean, they always provide like beyond expectation work to us. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they're going to try new things. They're, they'll yes. try new technology um, just because they, they have that opportunity. So it is a growing experience for them in so many, so many areas. Yeah. And as a teacher, we're learning from them sometimes right. that have yeah. In fact, the first time I ever learned about Kahoot was from a student because they had to, part of something they were working on, they had to create something so that their classmates could practice with whatever topic they were teaching the class. And that was how I learned about Kahoot because a kid came to me and said, well, can I use Kahoot as my practice? And I was like, all right, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> it worked awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, we use the SAMR model uh, here at Live for Life um, when we talk about technology integration. Um, and I think that finding ways not just to substitute tech, but actually where it's, you know, redefining what you can do in the classroom, I think are, are really important. Okay, so um, let's look at what we've got up next. Let me share my screen here. So up next, we've got uh, Sam from Ferg Floor, who is here to talk about student collaboration. So um, in just a minute, we're going to jump off of this recording and uh, jump into the next meeting room. Um, so we hope that you will be following us along to that uh, next presentation as well. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Shannon.